it would not have been possible to produce all of the sessions and content for Punchback Print and bring you all of this content for free without the help of our amazing sponsors. So without further ado, here is a quick word from one of them. More than half of brand owners and marketers select their print providers based on their ability to provide unique ideas to enhance print, offer the newest environmentally sustainable production technology, and proactively educate them on special print effects. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to everyone to another episode of our series of Anything in Print. My name's Simon Isaacs and I'm responsible for the commercial and industrial print group here at Rico UK. And I'm very pleased to be hosting this event today as large format has lately become such a hot topic within the print industry and also within Rico. So I have to say that the timing couldn't be better with our huge investments in the wide format space and also the collaboration with our guests and customers today. So I do feel the stars are aligning and this is actually the second episode dedicated to this subject. If you missed the first one, you can access it on demand by the AIP hub link in your resources list. And a special welcome to those joining via IPIA's Punchback Print Conference schedule. as a bit of a tongue twister. I'm really pleased to have you here with us today. So first of all, some housekeeping. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A tool. We will try to answer as many of these as possible, but if a longer answer is, is needed, we'll get UGL to, to send a, an email with the answer on, on that. There's also a little survey on your screen asking you about your experiences with wide format. So please do participate and we'll read the results at the end of the webinar, which I think will be very interesting for everyone. The on-demand version of today's recording will be sent after the event, and there are some additional help materials in the resources list. It's probably a bit late to mention, as you're all on, but uh, to get the best viewing experience, we recommend Google Chrome, and to close other programs or browser sessions that could cause issues. So, um, wait for the slide. I think we are now ready for the main part of the webinar, so let me introduce everyone. We've got a lively agenda of discussion topics and we will bring you some of the best insights on how to evolve your business case for large format prints. We've got a fantastic lineup of, uh, of guests and speakers, so I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Mark, Managing Director of Digital Marketing Agency and owner of Large Format Review. Mark's very well known in the industry and is a recognised authority in this wide format space. We have Sean, the Global PM at DryTac, our media and supplies partner, and two special guests, our customers and friends, Terry at Gilmex and Scott at Appeal Media. And final, finally, we've got Yujal, who's my very best large format specialist here at Rico UK. He actually told me that I had to insert that very best statement because he is actually very vain. But uh, I'm confident <laughs> that the advice from our guests <laughs> bringing decades of combined industry experience to the table will help you plan and develop a business case for large format print in this new norm we find ourselves within. So welcome, ladies and gents. So let's set the scene first. Throughout these webinars, we spoke at length about the power of print and the opportunity it presents to our industry. The pandemic has changed our world emotionally, physically and economically and because it's impossible to accurately know the future, we have no choice but to stay flexible and try and predict and invest in the opportunities for digital print by separating the short from the longer term concerns. And looking at specific macro trends in vertical markets, one of them being graphic large formats. Mark, let me start with you first. Your line of work clearly revolves around large formats. So can you offer some initial thoughts and insights to us, please? Hi, Simon. Um, yeah. Hi to all of the panel as well. Thank you for inviting me along today. Um, yeah, at large format review, all we do all day, every day is wide format. It, it's the, 
it's, it's everything. So um, hopefully I can provide some insights into what we're seeing going on, what we're hearing from the market, uh, where the opportunities are, and um, we'll take it from there and see what happens. Um, right. One of the issues that everyone's got at the moment is loss capacity. Um, I mean, one of the first things that happened when uh, COVID came along was retail shut down and the exhibitions started getting cancelled left, left, right and centre. Now, they are two two massive areas for anyone that's in wide format print. Um, so the, the issue for most people is replacing that capacity. Now, a lot of people have replaced capacity with safety signage and COVID stuff. We'll, we'll come back to that later. But I, I guess the other thing that's happened to a lot of print companies at the moment, particularly the ones that are almost completely and totally um, immersed in retail and exhibition, is they've had to think about how they can diversify that business and not leave themselves exposed like that again. I mean, it's, it's, it's never great to have all of your eggs in one basket, right? I mean, that's the that's general thing in business anyway. So um, where are the opportunities? That's the question that everyone's asking. And um, there are a number. Uh, some of them are going to require more work than others. One of the ones that I'm particularly keen on is um, wall coverings. I, I think that's a, a, that's got a lot of potential there. I mean, we're already starting to see it in places like um, offices, schools, colleges, hospitals. But now, energy as market research have predicted. 23.6% annual growth between now and 2025, with that digital printed um, wall coverings market reaching a value by 2025 of 10.4 billion. Now that, that's a sizable chunk, and that's only the digital stuff, by the way. That, that's not all wallpaper, that's just the digitally produced stuff. Um, what kind of applications is that gonna be used for? Well, as I say, offices, schools, and colleges, they're kind of using it as signage at the moment. They're putting it up for, for motivational and inspirational type messaging and that kind of thing on walls. You're seeing hospitals using it quite a lot in children's wards. They're trying to, to brighten up the, the – they're trying to make it more comfortable and less intimidating, I guess, for the younger patients. I mean, we're, we're seeing – known cartoon characters and stuff like that being printed. We're also seeing stuff like MRI scanners being wrapped and stuff like that. Again, I guess from a child's point of view, being loaded up into a space rocket is a little bit less intimidating than being loaded into an MRI scanner, all right? So um, the other areas, hotels, restaurants, cafes and bars, again, we're already seeing more and more digital walls um, appearing in those kind of places, everything from just wall coverings through to chalkboard effects, tabletops. Again, I think as we come out the other side of COVID and these things start opening up a lot more, we're probably going to start seeing more things like, like menus and, and cocktail lists and stuff like that being printed on the walls of bars, cafes, restaurants. And the, I, I think the most interesting part of that market is actually the consumer market. Now, <laughs> we, we, it's not an area where we've actually really done particularly well as, a, as an industry. We we've, haven't really been that great at creating pull from consumers of digital print into our industry. I, I think part of that is because <laughs> our machines were busy, right? Every everyone had, uh, everyone was service and exhibition service in retail. Um, print capacity um, was being used up. So why even worry about looking for new work? And I, I think that's part of the problem why it hasn't developed as quickly as it could. But that is a massive, massive sector, I believe. Um, consumer wallpaper and. Uh, it's not without its challenges. I mean, it would have to be marketed differently, certainly. You, you, you'd be – the person that's going to be buying football-themed wallpaper for their son's bedroom isn't interested in, in, in what your print production capacity is when he goes onto your existing website. So the probability is you, you possibly even need to create a new brand, certainly a new website, and you're now talking about consumer messaging. It's far more emotive and a lot less technical um, and how you market yourself would be different as well. 
but the tools are there. I mean, you, you, you put a concept together of a, of a good looking bedroom that can be cobbled together in Photoshop by some of your pre-press people, stick that out on social media. I'm fairly sure you put that out with the right kind of hashtags on it. It's going to get shared, but just as importantly, you're probably going to get some sales leads coming back from that. So the, the, the tools are there, but it's not without its challenges to go out into that sector. But as I say, when you're looking at numbers like 23.6% uh, annual growth and, and, and get into a market value of, of over 10 billion inside the next four to five years, wh why would you not be interested in looking at that in greater detail yeah absolutely absolutely and, and sean have you got anything to add to that yeah well firstly simon thanks for having me and good afternoon everybody it's certainly a pleasure to be here and i do hope everybody is safe and well at these difficult times so at dry tech we have certainly seen an increase in demand for wall covering products so pre-covid uh, for a long long while and that sort of lent us to build a whole range of products around that space. I mean, a lot of our customers, general graphics and signage producers, are looking for avenues to produce extra revenue streams uh, with their large format pr um, print devices. And also specific businesses have been built around this increase in demand and quality. So it certainly led for a whole branch and a whole range of products to be developed within the, the wall covering in-house. I mean, at DryTac, our niche has been creating specialist adhesives for easy application. And with the demand and changes within digital, it's led that those those uh, products to be in high demand. So you can you can change your wall coverings every week, every month, every year, depending on your your kind of uh, thought and fashions with, with fashion trends within the market. Uh, again, the wall covering is an emotional purchase. You don't necessarily look at the square meter cost when you go and buy something. You look at what that's going to bring to you. It's an emotional purchase. Does it match your furniture? And it sort of lends itself completely to a different a dis different entry point of the market. Uh, I mean, you can literally, as Mark just said, we can you can go out and you can decorate your children's bedrooms to whatever they want. And then when they grow up, I know certainly my children are growing and quickly uh, growing up, changing, is that they can they can certainly have their bedrooms and spaces developed. I mean, then then you move on to branding and promotion. I mean, walls are a key area, and there's a lot of space within any every, any environment, be that a production house, be that a, a retail store, be that an office block that lends it lends itself to, to have so much done with that space to either produce a, a marketing message, uh, an inspirational message, or just to make that an encouraging, exciting place to be. Absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. And you, Joe, from a manufacturer's perspective. Yeah, um, I can only endorse what Mark and Sean have said. So good afternoon, everyone, uh, regarding the growth in digital wall coverings and interior applications. Uh, I speak to many clients from all sectors of the printing industry, and the main topic of discussion is customization. It's these one-offs. Um, these involve low-volume print uh, specific to one application or printing wallpaper for themed wall uh, to print it on the jewellery boxes, believe it or not. But anything that adds value to, to the product itself. I know that hotel chains and B&Bs have embraced the concept of having themed rooms. Um, these are the kind of discussions I get involved with, with customers who are trying to produce this kind of work. Um, Applications drive demand, and I think it's up to all of us in the industry to make these applications known to all sectors of industry and commerce. Because, Simon, when I, when I mentioned digital wallpaper, I am sure there are people out there with visions of a pasting table with paste and a brush ready to get this wallpaper up. But actually, it's a dry and easy process to apply. So I think we should do better there. Okay. Well, that's, um, yeah, that's great. And... and my, my summary of that would be the opportunity looks like it is certainly evolving from traditional areas and, and the important message I took from, from, from all of you and especially leading by Mark was it's ripe for innovation. It's also accelerating into many untapped areas due, due to the pandemic. Um, throughout COVID, the print industry has made a lot of headlines with regard to PPE, supporting critical communications via safety, textile, floor and display graphics. And if we look at Q1 COVID impact survey by the BPIF, on average, nearly a third of printers' business was dedicated to critical print services of prints. And I look at some of our own metrics as well within RICO and, and who we've been supporting to engineering and click. And that certainly is the case. So in, in, in the food, pharmaceutical, health and social care, education, public services and local government sectors. 
But, um, Mark, while I appreciate we, we all have to be extremely active, do you think more would have been possible if people had the right technology in place? Um, I, I, I genuinely don't know if it was a technology issue or, or, always. I, 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 I do believe, as an industry, we've been quite lazy for a few years. We, we haven't innovated enough. I, I think the innovation came to a stop a few years back because we were all keeping our machines busy and active. And, uh, you know, why, why, why go out looking for new work if, if the orchards are full of fruit, you know? I think... So, of course, new technology is going to make a difference in the future. There's sectors like sustainability where latex print has is, is got um, an advantage over solvent print. Um, the ability to print onto non-PVC materials uh, and things like that. Yes, that, that's a technology issue. That's an ink issue. So there's moves to be made there, certainly. But I think as much as anything else, creativity is, is what's going to be required more i think we did people need to start thinking again people look this is an entrepreneurial dynamic business if, there's a lot of people still in this industry as printers that were in here right at the outset back in the early 90s they need to get back to the kind of innovation and entrepreneurial um kind of attitude that they had then <laughs> Every crisis is an opportunity, right? I know that's a cliche, and I know it's possibly hard for some people to look at that in, in, in the grim kind of situation we're in, but it's the truth all the same. There is, there is opportunity out there for the people that are willing to spot things, make the right moves at the right time, and make things happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's that's right. It's innovation that that really should be pushing forward, and it, it, it's being open to these uh, ideas and, and, and really pushing our, our industry forward in terms of what adds value and uh, whether it is on a on, on, in the medical sector to, to make a, a child feel better about what they're doing in the hospital, or whether it's in retail. It's important for us to be spotting those opportunities and and making sure we're we're ready to capitalise on them. But um, uh, Sean, you know, thinking about the, the, the RICO and dry tap partnership that we've, we've got uh, going on uh, and what we're doing with large customers like Next Retail, can, can you offer any thoughts there? Uh, um, absolutely. And so it's sort of kind of where do I start, really? Um, sort of over the last three to six, sort of three to four months where this COVID environment happened, our factories have never been so busy, both our factory in Bristol and our factory in Canada have been producing products around the clock six days a week since we've been trying to fulfill the demand generated by our customers. Um, DryTag itself, we've been producing floor graphics uh, and sort of signage related products for many, many years. And it's, so, and it's now that demand has become mm -hmm. unprecedented. I think, that, uh, I think the way that floor graphics recently have uh, sort of become the new norm. They've a way to transmit a message on the floor won't has changed forever. Uh, this demand has been proven. What what can what can be done under your feet? It's every nose can be shepherded around a store that never be, never before. And it's now an opportunity for those creatives amongst us. I mean, we've seen some of the displays on screen. Mark and his creative imagery for uh, Pringles there is to say actually change those messages from don't come anywhere near me to the uh, to the issues we've had with COVID. To although we have to keep our social difference in spaces, um, to actually change those into marketing messages, which are clear. Um, are clearly important. I mean, we're very excited to be working with Rico and the Rico team. It's turned itself at the right opportunity where you, uh, the Rico, have the technology uh, that's paired quite nicely with our, our consumables. And uh, your customers, that the, the, our customers we're working on together, have all had those demands within those retail spaces. So, for us to to partner with with your brand and have products that are, that are specified and, and developed around your chassis and and f uh, future products coming through is really quite exciting. And to have that with your consumables team and your range of customers, and now just recently to have that online with your eShop facility, uh, as opening a, a whole new raft of opportunities between us and the RICO organization. So that we look forward to an embrace. Great. Great, we do too. And, and, and you, Jam, um, what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, I, I think innovation is, is very important, as, uh, as Mark said. But a lot of people have not taken the plunge and adopted uh, wide format technology. I mean, I enter stores now actively looking for the signage as it's quite directive, telling me where to go, what to do. Um, but also bring, I also believe this is brought home to, to the fact of designers that signage can be creative, it can be fun, and not just traditionally used for plain branding and pricing. If you combine a, a printer with a digital cutter, uh, you add another dimension to the visual effects. And, and that Pringle one there is an excellent example of how you can make messaging bright and clear and also it's profiled as well when it's cut. Um, I think there's a lot more we can do uh, and also innovate at the same time, but bring people more on board to grasp the wide format technology. Because, um, uh, Simon, I honestly believe we're only limited in what we can print by our imagination. <laughs> yeah, I, I, agree. I, I do agree with that. And uh, although my imagination could be quite scary sometimes, I do, I do agree with that. <laughs> what, what, what I love about it, I've seen it within print and within marketing over many years. And, and the amount of direction we actually take um, from what is printed around us, whether it's on a printed page or around us, it, it is unbelievable. And I've noticed myself buying things that I didn't go in the shop to buy because of some of these floor graphics that have been, you know, as Sean said, initially put there for social distancing, but are now driving behavior. And, and it is our imagination that's going to really drive this forward. So I'm really pleased to see Sean and, and, and the team collaborating on our eShop and, and media, because that gives our customers the ability to, to, to buy things that they know will work. Um, and and it's, it's a great partnership. So just thinking about the wider opportunity, Mark, what, what do you think is the, the scale of the potential? Um, well, in terms of floor graphics, um, can we just pop back to that Pringles one briefly for a second, the Pringles slide? Now, that, that graphic there yeah, is an example. Uh, now, I think what we're actually seeing from um, retail buyers and print buyers at the moment is that the safety signage going down is, is all well and good. But look, no one wants to go into their favorite shop and their favorite store and, and, and look at, at, at the kind of signs you'd be seeing on a building site, right? You, you don't want to walk in there and be intimidated. You want to see this kind of stuff. Um, and again, there's, look, there's a, I, I know firsthand that there's an opportunity here because that Pringles sign there was actually designed by us. I, I designed that and chucked that out on social media just as I look, guys, think outside of the box a little bit. Now, that absolutely went viral on LinkedIn, that image. Um, but not only that, it then got picked up by Kellogg's, who then came back to me and said, oh, we, we'd like to buy that design off you. Can you print it for us? Now, I'm not a printer. We, we run the large format review blog. But if I had been a printer, that, that was an opportunity to, to get a foot in the door of printing for Kellogg's. And the thing about it is it wasn't just a fluke either, you know. Black and Decker, we did another similar concept that we sh we stuck out on social media for Black and Decker. It was, the message was um, social distancing measured perfectly with a, a picture of a Black and Decker um, tape measure. Again, Black and Decker came back to us and said, we'd like to buy that design off you. Can you do the printing, by the way? So, th listen, there's opportunities out there. This is This is new ground. And floor graphics is new ground as well because it's been underutilized in the past i think floor graphics but what people are seeing now certainly what buyers and, and what retail print buyers are seeing now these these signs work when you're standing in a queue and you're standing on top of it for a minute or more you're going to engage with it and it's possibly going to make you react in some way particularly if you start putting qr codes on there and and discount vouchers and stuff like that you probably are going to be able to shape buying patterns so yes i think there's a huge opportunity in in floor graphics um and then separately i think there's also a massive opportunity in personalization of of print more specifically i think what the floor graphic thing has shown to people in the retail environment is is that personalization has got a genuine value to it you you can put messages on images in the right places and people are going to respond to them um now, personalization, we're probably all familiar with. I guess the guys at Rico are certainly familiar with, with personalization in a smaller format. You know, you've got things like Moonpig and Funky Pigeon that have built entire businesses around personalization of small format digital cards. 
Um, you're also seeing personalization of giftware, golf balls, pens, USB sticks, T-shirts, all of that. We're, we're all familiar with that. Personalization, again, in wide format, hasn't really been tapped into as much as it, as it could be. And there's so much scope for that to happen. You know, you, you think about perhaps, for example, um, how a billboard campaign might traditionally have been done. Now, that would have been printed in runs of a thousand maybe on an offset press, um, distributed out, and then the same bill billboard goes up all over the country. Now, how about if Jaguar are doing the billboard for their, their shiny new F-Pace um, SUV? How about instead of just putting out this generic image, they actually put the telephone number and the email address of the dealer nearest to each individual billboard site? Now, you, you've gone from that's no longer just an awareness campaign now, right? That, that's now a call to action. You're now, you're now kind of steering your customers towards the um, sales funnel. And I think that's something that, again, print buyers and brands are tuned into that opportunity now more than they ever have been in the past. And, and I think it's on PSPs to go out there and, and really capitalize um, on, on that opportunity. It's, it's there for, for grabbing I mean, right across the board. In-store, again, you look at in-store. Now, okay, as, as a cliched example, let's look at um, a Tesco's in Cornwall might do better with um, some signage promoting Cornish pasties. The same Tesco's in Leicestershire might do better promoting Melton Mowbray pies. You, that, that's what digital brings to the party. You, you can drill down the demographic to a localized sector, and only digital can do that, because only digital can do the, the short runs effectively, and it's a huge opportunity. If, if, if I was a PSP at the moment, I, I'd be doing a lot of um, – I'd, I'd be comping examples of work and I'd be using social media and other channels to get in touch with the right people and say look did you know you could do this look did you know you could do that again coming back to the Pringles thing and the Black and Decker thing I referred to earlier it works I've, I've sent yeah. two invoices for designs that are sold without that ever even being the agenda it, it works you be creative yeah yeah, that's a great message. It's, you know, don't just wait for it to come to you. Actually, go out there, create something, uh, and then give yourselves the opportunity to, to to then follow up with these huge brands. So, Sean, have you got anything, uh, any observations on 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 this uh, opportunity? Yeah, I mean, well, the the opportunity is by certainly very very large. I mean, you can break everything down into lots of little segments at the moment. But the fundamentals are that you're a printer. You've bought a device now. You've invested your hard-earned money into in technology. But you now have a, a what now is a device that can span multi-different platforms. You've got a product that can give you lots of different vertical markets and new revenue streams that pr previously wouldn't have been available to you. To have a device that can open up wall coverings, vehicle graphics, window graphics, retail signage, and many more segments that all could be personalized. And what that has opened up for us at DryTac is it's kind of changed the way we think about adhesives now because gone are the days where you'd put it on a PVC and you know knowing that's going to be up there for three, five, seven years. These We've had to develop products for these devices knowing that they can be sent out to store. The people working in the store can fit them. They're up for a matter of days and weeks. The promotion changes, they come down again. So all of that kind of short-term option that's clearly personalized, as Mark said, into regional specific graphics that can be down to location have all now got an option with all kind of wide format devices, which has now brought the brought it down to any any surface, any anywhere in any market now can have can display a message. It has a possibility to display the image, the brand, your identity to your customers and your clientele, no matter where you are. It's just all about getting educated with your device, educated with the materials out there to make sure you can choose the right things and be really, really flexible and work to the best opportunities for your clients. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and it's not only a great insight into the current opportunity in large format, it's also a lovely segue for me. So thanks, guys. It's, um, it's almost as though we rehearsed this. Um, in a relatively short space of time, Rico has built a solid portfolio of large format print solutions. And we see 
growing interest in large formats, specifically in the general commercial print space, because of all the good reasons that you guys have identified, it, and also because of the, the other elements being squeezed and commoditized. So Rico recognized that like other areas of my business, it's not just about great printers, it's about the digital front end controllers, the print heads, workflow automation software, MIS, web to print solutions, which need to be supported through systems integration, ongoing engineering with easy access to great value tested and accredited supplies. So basically we knew that our customers needed someone to guide them through the process and, and, and not be left to act as your own systems integrator. And the market data does suggest that large format offers all of us and you a fantastic opportunity to grow business and drive revenues and, and margins up. Mark and Sean spoke more about trends and specific areas of opportunities, but some of you may wonder where to start, what, you know, what to look for. So I'd like to turn to our customers, Terry and Scott. Uh, you know, I know our audience today is extremely interested in how organizations like yours can integrate large format into existing print operations. You know, so if I start with, with, with you, Terry, can you tell us at what stage did you take a leap of faith into wide format to form part of your business? Well, hello, Simon. Hello, everyone. Basically, Hi, we sold... Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Terry. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll continue. Basically, we sell... We've got two sides of our business, and we sold print room consumables, like finishing consumables, wires, combs, presentation binders, tab dividers. We supplied the FM companies at uh, their corporate sites. Uh, we've been going since 1945, but in 2010, we kind of spotted an opportunity within MFM companies at the corporate sites to supply wide format print because basically it, it appeared to us that they wasn't getting the great service. We see some of the pricing that they was paying and thought to ourselves, well, as we already supply these companies and we're already delivering now, let's give it a wide format a go. And basically, because we had the overhead paid for, because we own our own building, we stuck in a wide format machine. And uh, when we started, we basically started producing prints every third Tuesday uh, we got about one AO a month or something like that, but uh, it grew from there. And basically, that's that, that's how we got into into print. It wasn't actually a print company when we started. We was a print room con finishing consumable company, but um, we supplied the educational markets and the and the corporate market. So that's where that, that, that's how we got into it. Great, great so yeah. business yeah. instinct. Opportunity you saw, so uh, fantastic. And uh, Scott, so same question to you. What stage did you guys get into wide format and made the decision to, to to make it part of your business? Hey, hi Simon. Hey, hi everyone. Um, similar similar story. Um, just um, prior, and um, we were um, we were actually a paper business at the start. We just began as a small two man business. Um, myself and my business partner Stephen, um, and paper, um, and, and basically. Uh, customers would come in and they would ask if we could print this and if it could be a little bit bigger, can you print me a poster, can you put me a window vinyl, and, and so on and so forth. And as a, as, a, as a sort of gamut of products sort of grew, excuse me, sorry, that would be perfect timing. Perfect timing. Yeah, could make it yeah. um, as, the, um, as the products, um, as people were continually, our clients were coming in asking for just to sort of grow our products. That's exactly what we did. And we sort of got into a large format um, in around about 2010. Um, 2012 was when we got into the latex side of the business because by that point, we realised there was a real opportunity to look at the automotive trade with, um, with vehicle livery and so on and so forth. And we were very, very keen to keep adding to the business, um, just growing every... Uh, basically, we've got a, an attitude of always say yes, and then we sort of work out how we do that once we've said yes. So that's kind of how we go along at Appeal Media. And gradually, we've grown the business now. Um, we've got 16 members of staff here now. The large format side looks... Um, so we've got the latex, which looks after 
um, banner printing, um, we have um, vehicle, graf vehicle graphic printing, anything at all that requires that, that type of application would go through the latex. And recently, um, through you guys, we've invested in the, the 6250, which is the flatbed, and that's purely um, to service the construction side. We, we began a, a new division, a new business, actually, but it's the same owners, um, which was specifically targeted at the construction side. We're quite well connected in there, and we were being asked for um, just basically site signage and all the usual flat panel work that, that comes along with that. And um, and that's been quite sort of, sort of, sort of revolutionised what we were doing in terms of throughput. And then ultimately, on the 22nd of March there, when we were announced that this COVID thing was coming along, we, would, we had a really clever campaign. Um, it was almost done a sort of charity tact to the local schools and things. We were putting in sanitizer boards that had um, a, little, um, a little visual instruction along with the dispenser. And ultimately, that's now really grown to over 300 schools engaging in the, the whole of Glasgow City Council. So we've, we've managed to, just through thinking out the box and being creative and going back to what Mark said, looking at what we could do. Sorry, guys. Put this off. Put my phone off. Beg your pardon about this. It would happen. It's not rang all day and it's rang twice. You put, you put, just put that on my desk on this one. Um, and so basically what's happened there is the, the school opportunity opened up and... And we've been absolutely hammered supporting all the all the information panels, floor stickers, instructional boards, and all the like. So that's sort of how large formats came to be a really, really key part of our organisation. Okay. So, you know, in terms of the financial viability, then did that come quickly after the investments? Absolutely. It was. I mean, if, if we're speaking to the converted, obviously people know how difficult it can be when you're cutting pre-spaced vinyls and making little panels to go and mount and then application paper and all that comes with that. To give you an idea, and this is this is absolutely real, we've got a job for a 1,000 panels, which were 400 by 300, and it's basically white text on black Fomex, um, instructional information for a huge um, construction uh, company who were doing some work at Glasgow, um, Glasgow University. Now, if you were to sit and produce a 1,000 400 by 300 panels and try and put pre-space into them, it would be probably 2027 20, before you would have it done, by which times the construction would be well and truly finished. We were producing 24 panels. You can get basically at 400 by 300, you get 24 up on the on the on the 6250, and that's you. Now you're printing a white ink, which is the which of the guys may not know, but it's a little bit slower. But effectively, you've got 24 panels ready to go in a box in 10 minutes. So we managed to get the whole job over the line in something like 14 working hours. Which wow. was absolutely extraordinary. So, so this um, must be more than just the device. It must really come in and and you, you, you know, the introduction of the technology. You, you've got to look at your infrastructure and workflow. Absolutely, absolutely. So, it's. Um, I mean, <laughs> the man hours that we've got back and the productivity has just gone through the roof because clearly, and also, also the waste. Well, there is no waste because we're bringing media in that's cut to size and we're laying ink on. I mean, the cost savings are quite ridiculous. The productivity is through the roof. Um, and it just it has just happened at the best time. With all that's going on, COVID and all the rest of it, what happened to our organisation with the advent of the COVID and obviously the construction sites and the type of instruction panels they were looking for, it could not have had a better fit than than what we're, do, what we're getting through the Rico 6250. It's... Um, it's changed the business. Fantastic. And so supporting the 6250, and obviously it's fantastic to hear when any of our products are, 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 are such a positive impact on customers. But, um, the, the, the MIS workflow in terms of what you did in the integration, uh, any sort of hints and tips? Uh, I'm sure there's, there's other guys on the call looking at this thinking, you know, I've got devices. We're expanding, but you know, the the the, the, um, uh, the systems management is going to be critical. I think to to help them achieve that. Well, we've 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 really had no problems whatsoever. We we purposely moved to a new site. We moved to a site that's seven and a half thousand square foot. Um, but, but we had to move to that site because the 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 the, 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 the sixty two fifty wouldn't have gone into the old factory and the manner that we wanted it to go in because we're trying to get a really good workflow effectively panels come in 
So it's panels come in, panels go on, panels go on a table and get finished and panels go out. That's that's the workflow that we're trying to get to in terms of moving material through the factory. So you've absolutely, you're working with panels here that are eight foot by four foot. So you clearly have to think forward and think how are you going to manage these panels and how are you going to store them? And because ultimately they need to be, they need to be looked after as they go through the process. So there's a little bit of thought required to do that. In terms of the integration of the machine when it came in, and how it fit, how it sort of fitted it. It basically just it went in so simply. It was really quite ridiculous. There was no. I'm no. I'm no someone that's intimidated for te for, from technology at all. And I don't think anyone needs to be because ultimately these things aren't designed to confuse. They're designed to be an aid. Um, and if you have that positive mindset, I think you can convert these machines and get them productive very very quickly, as proven with ourselves because we were pretty much up and going off the bat, really. Um, and like I say, the benefits are. <laughs> The benefits are actually, I was printing laughing. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's when I was printing these jobs, I just was laughing at how simple it was. And if that's not a good thing, you'll need to show me what is. Yeah, no, it does sound like a good thing. We all like to laugh and whistle while we work. But, uh, Terry, coming was, back to you I was for a minute. <laughs> coming back to you for a minute, uh, um, in terms of you know, how quickly you made the solutions financially viable, and, and uh, I think specifically with latex, can you um, can you offer any sort of hints that provide there? Yeah, well, it was financially viable very quickly because, as I said before, we had the overhead paid for by the other side of our business, so we could take our time in developing it. But uh, we started off with um, another wide format uh, supplier that I won't name. Um, but then we we um, finally got into bed with yourselves there, for want of a better word, at uh, Rico, and now we've progressed on to buying three 5160s, and um, we position ourselves as overflow support, basically, for you guys in the FMs at the corporate site. So when we first started we had six machines where you had the aqueous and the non-aqueous machines but then when we moved over to latex obviously we could cut the machines down which helped with the uh, footprint with inside the company and uh, yeah. but our cas capacity uh, increased so it was win-win for us basically and it paid for itself very very quickly yeah fantastic and when you look at this Function of your business over over time. How does it compare with, if you like, the traditional or other areas of your business, uh, Terry? It compares very, very well, actually, because the margins are so much better on the wide format side than what they are on the consumable side. Um, we position ourselves that we can turn most print around within 24 hours. We are located just outside of central London, and central London and the West End basically is where most of our work comes from. But you will find that you have to turn work around within the 24 hours or even same day to support uh, the FM sites. And it helps the FM sites improve their income streams. But sometimes you only get two to three hours to turn a job around. So our location helps. Um, in central London, but also the capacity, the printing speeds of the machines is the, is the thing that's put us onto a different level, to be perfectly honest. Right, right. And, and Scott, in terms of you know, your side of business with, uh, with the paper, how, how does it compare and expanding your business? How important is wide format for your future? Yeah, it's very important. It is very important. It is growing. Uh, we do small format digital as well, but we've noticed that the main growth is in wide format. COVID, it's, it's very difficult to say COVID has a sil silver lining, but I'm sure that people understand what I'm saying. There has been a lot of signage, uh, floor graphics to be done, and that side of the business. So although there's not the quantity of jobs at this moment in time, there's definitely the quality at... Um, with regards to the value of these jobs. They are big and they can they long run, but also you can use personalization. We've noticed that the corporate companies, they have these two meter size or they have the floor graphics, but they also got their own logos put on them as well. And that makes a hell of a difference. Uh, I think uh, the, the gentleman before was talking about uh, 
give people something to look at. And, and I, I believe he's, he's, um, he's right. That's definitely what you should be looking to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, from, um, from, from your perspective, compared to your traditional um, business, what, what, what's the impact been and, and what's the future hold uh, for, for wide format? Was that for me? Sorry, I just missed that there. Yes, yeah, Scott, just, just in, in looking at comparing wide format to the traditional paper side of your business, uh, how does it compare to the other areas? Yeah, we'll just take it again there. Just to, the, 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 the margins are really quite incredible. Um, we do have latex. Um, I'm not going to name the, the, the vendor on that one. I don't want to be seen as swearing on the... On the so um, we'll keep that one to ourselves. But the latex is incredible. The margins in the latex are superb. But the margins on the flatbed specifically are really, really quite, um, you know, whistling and laughing, I said earlier on. It really does, from a labour-intensive point of view, it's just so simple. I mean, it really is. Um, I think it's one of these things. It's not until you actually see it, which is, I mean, it's a big investment. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, if, when you see these machines working and what they can do and how they do it, when they're laying down multiple colours, maybe on acrylics and things with a white background such that you get the reverse printing and things. When you see how easy this is, it really is a game changer. And, and it's got to be demoed because I don't think the, the average consumer or the average, sorry, your average client, I beg your pardon, that's interested in this technology, once you see it, it, it just you sort of get that warm kind of fuzzy feeling because to go right, right back to what we said at the beginning with Mark, when you talk about being creative, this is what this is all about. When you start printing on, you know, Aluminium panels, maybe there's got a like there's got a, maybe a brushed a brushed metallic finish on it. The, the things you can do are really, really. If, when you talk about that that sort of customised, bespoke sort of you know, um, homely type wall art. I mean, goodness me, you could just crack on and start. You could build a business around that just through eBay. There's your shop front, and you'd be away. Um, it really is. Um, if you've got creative juices at all on you, this, these machines will definitely let you get that out without a doubt. Uh, fantastic. And, and, and you, the, um, the other stuff you're doing, is this, uh, this flexibility helps you, you know, win additional business or gain new customers in new sectors? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's really, really interesting to say that because with a customer who's came in, we've got, we, 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 we've got um, a lot of customers who actually, they don't really know what they want but they know they want something. Um, and they want something that's different. And when they mention that, that's when things get quite exciting because it, as, a, as a designer myself, which I am, um, it lets you start to get in front of the screen and get a bit creative when you can start building layers and doing, doing nice things with spot UVs and stuff. The spot varnish, spot UVs. Spot varnish is one of the, one of the, um, one of the sort of um, finishes you get on the flatbed whereby you can gloss up a print just for anyone that doesn't understand what that is. I'm sure all you guys do. Um, I'll not assume everybody that's listening to this knows what Spot UV is, but when you start to highlight, for example, we did some um, we did some nice work there, and what it was, it was simply the eyes. The eyes were printed in matte, and we Spot UV the the whole the whole iris. We just wet the eyes up, and all of a sudden, this sign isn't just looking at you; it's looking at you, and it's so simple to do. But the effects are brilliant. Another one was a cleaning company wanted some nice signs. And these signs were basically just to bring people uh, to be people aware that the floors were wet. And what we did was we created um, four foot, four foot by four foot aluminium panels. We did the print, and what we did was we, we had the mop going over the floor, and we spot UV'd the wet part of the mop as it went over the floor. So visually, without even it saying it's a wet floor, it's a wet floor, and they really, really yeah. worked well. And it's just be getting creative, you know, just start, just start getting creative. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it, it's great to hear. We could talk about these examples all day, but I'm getting pinged on time. So just just bringing um, you, Jelen, to, to, uh, is there anything you want to ask the guys or any examples of experiences that, that you've learned on how easily large format can be integrated into existing commercial print organisations? Yeah, certainly, Simon. I mean, uh, Scott mentioned not to be scared of technology, and absolutely right. I think some people do get daunted by uh, wide format printers, but in truth, they're only a larger version than an A4 desktop printer. It's just slightly bigger, uh, and that's how they should be viewed. Um, for me, though, I think to make any integration of any wide format printing a success, I, I think it's so important and 
to have the right to business partner to help you choose that. It's not just the printing solution that you're actually having. It's, it's, a, it's a system in your in your infrastructure that's going to affect your workflow. So having so having a business partner that understands your workflow and your infrastructure, such as MIS, to get the system working in full. Um, I've got I'll just a couple, couple of quick examples of of what the guys are saying, what made them do something. I mean, I dealt with a manufacturing company, so it wasn't even a commercial printer, and they had an application whereby they were printing, sorry, they were producing material for seats and so forth and for bed, covering beds. One of their big clients decided we want to print our brand on those, and they didn't have a clue how to do this because they were a manufacturing company, not a printing company. So they came to Rico, and we actually helped them develop a, a printing system using our, one of our printers of our portfolio. But again, as, as Scott mentioned, we took them to our customer experience center in Telford, and, and you can't beat feeling, seeing, touching, and seeing the application happening in front of your eyes to really, for someone to understand what, what these devices can do. And they bought into this, and we justified it, and they bought it, and now they're expanding further forward. So that's just one example of, of producing something on material that isn't designed to be printed, uh, but it can be done. And, uh, mm -hmm. and other, other companies we deal with in the commercial sector, I mean, we had one client who was doing indoor work and was thinking of going to, uh, to do outdoor work, but his business was growing. So what does he do? Does he outsource it? Does he buy another device? Does he try and do outdoor work? And again, by analyzing his requirements, really understanding what he wants to try and achieve, we came up with a solution that uh, not only made him do outdoor work, but really expanded his business as well. So the key is, is having a partner that really understands the business, understands what they're trying to do from a media point of view, from a printer point of view, and an application point of view to really make the most of, of wide format printing. So, like I said, Simon, taking the plunge is always uh, difficult, isn't it? But you know what they say, once you're in, it's fine. Fine. <laughs> Sean, just any final thoughts on this, uh, on this section? I mean, I think a lot of it, uh, again, comes down to it's about creativity as well to uh, with any of your customers and understanding and, and pretty much having a go at all the, anything you can print on. I mean, we I think it's important to to team up with as many uh, hardware manufacturers as we can, such as such as Rico. We are sort of the coffee beans to your coffee machine. So for us and to see the customer's creativity allows us to think, what can we put adhesive on? What materials can we use that print differently? Again, it's all about there's nothing changes, nothing stands still in what we're trying to do. And what might be seen as a little bit different now could be the new norm in the next two or three months because that's how quickly our, ch our space changes technology in these devices is rapidly evolving it's one of the ch most changed technology industries in the world second to only telecoms if i believe uh, if i understand right but, but uh, again it's about experimentation it's about not being scared it's about being creative only to echo uh, only to echo what uh, uh, my colleagues on the panel have said Great, great. Well, I think, um, you know, it, it's really insight, really useful insight into the current opportunity in large format. But, you know, in a relatively short space of time, we, we, we you know, us guys, we've built the, the portfolio. Um, and, and I think now it's, um, it's a great time for our customers to really expand and use their creative skills to take this to market. So um, I, I hope today has given everyone some great food for thought um, about possible. Um, and as Mario, uh, Mario Stefani mentioned in our last or first episode, as an industry, we are so much more than ink on paper. And I think, yeah, you know, the message is yes, we can print anything. And at Rico, our print services go well beyond hardware or even the, the software that facilitates it. The continued extensive innovation and development programs will not only support your short-term business strategies and goals, but also longer-term opportunities to produce and create print that will stand out, provide differentiation, and drive value. So it's, it really isn't just about the print hardware that we provide, you know, fix or optimize. It's certainly not just about creating more capacity to drive commoditization. It's, it's that value added to anything in print. Uh, and really, at Rico, we just want to support and help you tackle anything in print now and in the future. So I think together we need to influence this as the, the next normal. So was there a final slide um, from Mark? I'm just losing track with the time now. <laughs> I 
think you just kind of covered it, Simon. I mean, the last thing that I was going to cover was the, the roadmap for, for um, wide format in the future. And, and I think it's about integration. I think it's about MIS systems. I think it's about software. I think software is going to be the key to, to unlock all of this. I mean, if you look at the, the things that have come into the, the, to the world market and, and disrupted and then dominated, you know, you're looking at Uber, you look at Netflix, you look at things like that. That's all software driven. I think the days of putting a, a piece of RIP software in the box and calling that a solution are gone. I think we now need to be looking at how we can help customers to create more pull for digital print by helping them to build websites, helping them to get into e-commerce. And, and I think it's important that PSPs start looking at, at choosing their partners that are going to be able to deliver that kind of stuff longer term. I think w wide format digital print is coming out of its um, – it's teenage years, if you want, and, and, and it's growing and it's maturing. And um, I think it's time now to start looking at software solutions to, to unlock some of the opportunity. And I think you also need to be looking at your hardware manufacturers to be, you know, and the, look, the people that are going to be there at the end of the days are going to be the people that make their own print heads, that make their own ink, that, that, that develop their own software. They're going to be the companies that win at the end of the day. So perhaps people need to start thinking about who they're partnering with in the longer term because in 10 years' time, it's not going to look like what it does now. It's going to be a very different animal, and you need to make sure you're choosing the right partners going forward. Great. Right, that's really, really fantastic insight. I think uh, that's exactly where we want to try and position Rico. Um, we've been manufacturing the print heads, which has supported many of the technologies in the past. We've um, created divisions for software and controllers, and certainly we see the marketplace and the systems integrated much more holistically, and that's, uh, that's where we want to support this creativity. So we would welcome the opportunities to follow up with anyone on the call, so please get in touch by the normal channels, uh, but also download the content from today. And I'd encourage you all to register for the next webinars that we'll host through August and September. Uh, again, always designed to provide insight, inspiration, uh, and support, if not to advertise our own bits and pieces too. So before we move on to questions, let's see what uh, the survey results are. So 60% of you on the call already provide large format print, but say you require help to expand, and 40% of you have large format, see constant growth. I mean, constant growth is always what we're driven to achieve and is an extremely difficult thing to, to capture. So what, what, what a ringing endorsement for, for large format. So um, with that, I think we'll move to some of the customer questions, which I'll click on to now. Um, so first one from Lucy. Hi, Lucy. I haven't uh, seen you for a while since London closed down. Um, I've, uh, do we think we need to educate marketers to include wide format graphics and packaging? Um, so, Mark, what do you think? Do we need to be, uh, I think that dovetails into uh, some of the stuff you mentioned earlier, but do we need to be educating the actual marketers to include wide format graphics in their campaigns? You probably didn't want to ask me that question. <laughs> so, it, it, this, this is one of my uh, big things. Uh, let's, look, there's some big players in, in wide format digital print now. It, it's, it's not a toy market anymore. You know, you've got Fujifilm, Hewlett Packard, Canon, Ricoh, uh, big corporations. I think it's time for you guys to start looking at how you can create more pull for digital print. There's too much of the onus on the marketing is left to the print service providers. It, it shouldn't be that way around. I, I personally don't think. I, I think the marketing machines that exist at the big corporate suppliers should be out there creating more pull for a higher volume of digital print. That's what grows the market. That's what gets more ink consumed. That's what gets more printers purchased. It, it's... It has to be done. It, it's not a question of should we do this. It's a question of when are you getting started, please. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. We, you know, we've kicked off thinking print campaigns, and uh, when we've spoken with some of our agencies, it's only through doing these sorts of campaigns for us that they've actually realised what the efficacy of print is within those campaigns to include and advise their customers on. So. 
absolutely agree with that, Mark. And, and uh, yeah, I am glad I asked you the uh, the question. Um, but um, the next question from Brendan. Um, what is the first most important step for a PSP, roughly 5 million turnover, looking to move from, say, being a pure commercial printer to moving into large format inkjet? So maybe um, ask uh, Terry that question. Um, probably the wrong person to ask there, <laughs> Simon, because it's not really what we did. As I say, we built up, so I... I feel a little bit unqualified to answer that question, to be honest with you. Sorry to let you down. That's all right. This is uh, to you, Jab. Um, in, ter in, in terms of uh, looking at what you're doing, actually, uh, what is it you're trying to achieve? What are the applications you want to produce? What side of the market are you aiming for? Um, there's, as we discussed today, there's so many variations in applications. Uh, do you want to concentrate on putting into substrate? Are you going to produce uh, flexible material? You may want to do everything, which is great. I'm happy to talk to you about it. But um, it's, it's understanding where you want to take the business. It's understanding what markets you want to enter and taking it steady. Uh, that's the main thing is, is to understand wide format because it's a, it's a technology in, that doesn't just involve printers it involves um, colour management it involves all kinds of things and they're great things to understand and really appreciate so my, my question to you is, is follow where your applications are going to go and follow that route into business Absolutely I think it's a great message uh, for Brendan I think uh, follow on from what Scott said just because you need to understand it not make it over complicated and uh you know for, as an industry i think there's plenty of people um that uh, that, that can help you understand that uh, that that as well so you know please, please get in touch next question is from richard where is rico going with wide format and will it form a main part of uh, the, the business well you know i i run the division um wide format uh, is something that fell under me a few years ago uh, coming from the, um, the the production side of the business for, from Inkjet for many years. Uh, and absolutely, we see the applied side of the business, the absolutely fundamental pillar for, for Rico moving forward. It's one of our four strategic pillars. And, and as people use these devices to share information more and more, we see that the applied side, the graphic side and, and other areas of the business being um, in a much stronger place to, to, to take over that pull, that annuity producing devices and the inks that we, we that underpin our business. So absolutely, it's, um, it's the most heavily invested part of Rico from an intellectual property perspective. We're purchasing companies like Colorgate, uh, LAC, to support this part of the business. And, and it's an extremely exciting uh, time with more change than I've seen over the last couple of uh, decades, probably. In, um, in the way that we focus our time and effort with, um, with the applied side. So yes, it's, it's very much a, a fundamental part of our business moving forward. Um, so I think we've got time for one more, um, and that could be um, from uh, Tim, and that is environmental friendly materials are generally more expensive than those it is replacing. How can this be addressed, get more companies using Friendly media is money talk. So that that one needs to uh, go to, I think, um, uh, Sean, is it, on the supply side, or is that Mark? I think I could answer that one for you. I mean, environmentally friendly material sustainability, I think we were supposed to be uh, looking at earlier, is, a, is quite a thing right now. The problem you've got with environmental materials um, when we use a number uh, it's what you classify as environmentally friendly i mean unfortunately pvc in the world gets this big big bad uh, monster message when it actually isn't to be fair it's got a low carbon footprint to produce it's all about understanding the materials um, we work with recycled products we work with uh, polypropylenes polyesters we work with um, biodegradable products but again this all boils down to not just us as a material supplier it boils down to where things can get recycled where things can get changed and what happens at the end of it i mean the easiest example is if you are making plasters and you produce plasters you have those little end tapes that come off of the release line 
you're distributing those all over the world in millions of tiny pieces. They are very, very diff difficult to recycle. And that's kind of the way with wide format material, because there isn't an infrastructure within the UK or with any or sort of any market currently to say, I'm going to put a printed polyester mm. here with the water-based adhesive. I'm going to put a solvent-based PVC here with a, um, with, a print, with a UV print on it. It can't be split up. So it only actually becomes into one lot of waste. And so it's a very, very gray area at the moment. It needs a little bit more work. It needs some more legislation and, and it needs some more development and an understanding by the market. And unfortunately, given the, where we stand in our climate, the sustainability has moved from the top of the list right the way down to the bottom, of, unfortunately, right now. So, again, I think it's going to come back. Um, the likes of latex printing onto devices is certainly going to be moving the market forward. The demand from the likes of Adidas and Nike have also changed the way they want sustainability within their stores. That's going to grow out globally. But it's all about volume. The more we produce in sustainable products, the, 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 the more improved the price will be. Yeah, thank you. That is great. I think it is about scale and, and environmental issues are, are absolutely core to RICO and, and, and uh, our, our, our fundamental values. So we're keen to, to make sure that we're pushing those across all elements of our business and, uh, and, and make sure we look after the future for everyone. So uh, th thanks for answer, Sean. So we'll, we'll, we've got a list of more questions, but we'll pick a final one and uh, move on to close. So from Brendan, um, would you suggest roll to roll flatbed or hybrid as a first investment in large format print technology. I will move to you, Joe, but as the sales director, I suggest all of them, but uh, I'll move to you, Joe. To the... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Yes, all of them, <laughs> and immediately. And again, it depends on your application. Um, if you're proposing to do banners and pull-ups and traditional things like that, then roll-to-roll -roll is better suited. Um, if you're thinking just doing uh, maybe just boards all the way through, you can choose the flatbed or the hybrid. Um, each has its own benefits. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. So it's just really trying to understand that application to begin with and applications, because I'm sure there'd be more than one. Um, I would always suggest as a low cost option to start off in wide format if you need to it is to invest in a roll to roll. They are generally of lesser cost. And uh, if you if you find that uh, the volume starts picking up and you're doing more mounting, then, then a hybrid or flatbed will come, or both at the same time. But it, it really does depend on the applications and the volume that you're trying to achieve and, and to move that forward and to understand it a bit better. So that'd be my uh, very simple advice. That's great. Uh, thanks. I think that's, you've always got to look for, for value and, and minimizing that risk. And I think we can help our customers uh, you know, do that. Uh, in very innovative ways. So, so thank you, everyone. Um, and uh, just, just to close, you know, we, we, we are all needing to drive innovation. We all look to, uh, as an industry, uh, show the value that we can deliver to those end customers out there. And whether it's innovation development programs at RICO to support you and your business goals and strategies or, or, or your innovation for your customers, you know, collectively, we need to look to the uh, short and longer term opportunities and produce and create print that will stand out and provide differentiation and, and drive value for all of us. So, uh, in summary, I'd just like to thank everyone for their time and participation. And just to reiterate, we'll welcome the opportunity to follow up. So, please get in touch by the normal channels, but also download the content today. And I very much look forward to seeing you at summer so have a good break and we'll see you on the next webinar in about three weeks time so thank you very much and and with that Beata, i think we can close thank you simon thank you thanks thank guys you. thanks sean